gon' step up for me Make sure my fans stay cause my daughter gotta eat everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel that is deb chanel's Days world thank you for your support and your continued support you have supplied me on my channel uh always continue to subscribe 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 to my video channel share my videos and like my videos that would be a great help to me like share and subscribe to my channel that's all i ask okay moving on we're gonna go because we got a muscle video yes you know merit to medicine aired last night which was the 3rd of November, and it was somewhat decent. It wasn't that bad, but it was okay. One good is uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. If you didn't catch that show, you can always preview it on my show, giving my uh, or my video ch um, YouTube channel or my perspectives or my view on what happened on last night episode with them. But we're going to be talking about Mer Merit to Medicine today. And it was titled Contessa's Carnival. It's episode nine, season seven. Okay, just to give you a little summary about it. It says, Quad allows Heavenly to set her up on a blind date. Dr. Jackie renovates a new office space. Um, and overwhelmed Contessa throws a huge carnival birthday for her kids. Uh, and Buffy comes to Simone for help when she discovers a lump in her breast. Okay, so that was a bit of the summary. We're going to get right on into it. We're going to be talking about Dr. Heavenly first. Dr. Heavenly called herself getting all dressed up, going over there, picking up quad <laughs> to take her out. She's setting her up on a blind date. So quad's pretty much thinking she's going to be seeing one guy. But in the actual truth of the um, mixture of the cake that Dr. Heavenly is trying to bake us, Honey, she had two men. They're both dentists for Quad to me. Unbeknownst to uh, Quad, okay? So, uh, of course, Quad is all decked up. She's looking pretty when Dr. Heavenly pick her up. Dr. Heavenly has called herself getting dressed up. She looks uh, pretty decent. And she had on the cutest little shoes. But it seemed like they were too small for her body. Go figure, right? They were like some boot-type cutting heels, ankle boot heels or whatever and she, you could she just tiptoeing tiptoeing like she couldn't walk in them she said they were hurting her feet i'm like girl why would you put on something first you, you needed to have on some wide uh some wide shaped or width shoes you didn't need nothing pointy like that okay oh, it looked like her feet or her ankles were swelling in them but anyway she was like tiptoeing tiptoeing like she was walking on ice or something and didn't want to slip but she was trying to get into that um, restaurant that they were meeting the men at, or the man, I should say, because uh, Quad did not know she was being set up for two blind dates. All right. So, Heavenly, uh, they both go into the restaurant. And Heavenly, you know, like I said, she don't really tell Quad nothing. But she see the first gentleman walks in the restaurant. And she said, oh, OK, well. Um, yeah, he's coming, and she said, why don't you sit over here with me on my side so we can, like, give him a 411, try to find out everything, because you do know, I haven't seen these guys, I don't know what they really look like, but they are dentists, I have kept in contact with them, and that's their profession, that they're still practicing in, so they make money, but sometimes you gotta not look on the outside, so it's like she was forewarning Quad, and Quad should have picked up on it, okay, you don't set me up with a bunch of thugs. Well, not thugs, but duds. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're not up to my caliber. You saying they got money and that's still supposed to interest me in some way? I mean, I want the total package. I want the man to be looking good, uh, dressed well, uh, very influential, uh, knows a lot more, and can teach me something. And I want him to be a millionaire, billionaire, zillionaire, whatever. I need all of that in my life, okay? So, uh, I'm guessing she thought Heavenly was going to come somewhat close to that. Like, if it had to be on the scale with the 10 being the highest and the ones being total, total loser. I guess she wanted uh, Dr. Heavenly to come to, like, an 8.5 or at least a, a strong 9. But, honey, with Dr. Heavenly choices, they were like, we just going to give them a 2 because they got good jobs. That's all I'm going to give them. <laughs> okay? But, anyway, um... The first guy comes up, I think his name is Henry. 
I want to say, but I'm not really sure. But uh, anyway, he comes in and he's looking like half a Playboy, half a pimp, and half of he looked like he ain't got no money or he just blow it like he gambles or, or, or drinks it all the way. I mean, for him to be a dentist, his teeth wasn't looking all pretty straight and, you know, pronounced when he smiled because he really didn't even try to smile it's like he was trying to hide his smile. I'm like, you say he a dentist, girl? Because even if he had messed up teeth, he could put caps on them teeth, meaning crowns or a bridge, or he could pull them all out and get him a set of dentures. Either way, it would have been better than what his teeth were looking like. So I'm like, mm-mm. And his whole demeanor was just like sloppy, you know, uh, not that he couldn't look better because he could. He, he, he's, uh, you know, just me looking from the outside, looking in from what Dr. Heavenly was saying. He's a dentist. He make pretty good. So uh, I don't understand. But anyway, his whole demeanor was off. Um, he looked it off. His presentation was off. It was like, that's it. Three strikes, you're out. You know, thanks for coming, but no, we're going to continue looking. <laughs> So they call themselves want to do a matchup type resume, trying to feel him out of what he got, what he's doing now, and where he want to go type of scenario. Hine and Dr. Heaven was like, she put him on an interview on a sense. Like, what is your credit score? Now I ain't like, I'm like this. I ain't finna discuss my credit score with you or nothing on the first meet and greet. No, we have to be going along at least six months before I even talk, start talking to you about my credit score. And you somewhat trying to get in my business. And I have to really like you and hear from you and wanting to be seeing you, you know, and only you like a monogamous relationship or whatnot. Before we start getting in those type of uh, legalities or whatever. I'm like, nah, y'all pushing that a little bit too too much. You know what I'm saying? Ask normal questions like, what do you like to do in your spare time? Uh, do you have any children? Do you have a crazy baby mama in the past or a crazy ex-wife? Or, you know, are you separate? You know, those kind of things. Uh, but they were asking too many well thought out questions on the first day. So I thought it was just it was crazy on both of them. But they both were like going back and forth. You know, Carl was more so trying to figure out, you know, do you have children? How's their relationship going? Is it just craziness going on? Because she don't want to be bothered. Dr. Heaven was coming from a side where she was like, do you have income? <laughs> Is your credit good? You know, I'm like, this has been your friend that you hung out with back in the day in college, you know. If you were going to set somebody up with God, shouldn't you have gotten all the meat and potatoes prior to saying, I want you to meet my best girlfriend? <laughs> I'm like, Dr. Heaven, come on now. Just because a man got money don't mean he's good in every other aspect. Because money can be made between the two of you all. And y'all can get y'all stuff going and be, you know, go forth and be great uh, being a couple as well as as well as individuality careers and, you know, and uh, um, money-making ventures. You don't always have to say, oh, I'm going to get him because, you know, he has X amount of dollars and he's going to share them with, you know, like I'm saying, like you didn't make it. How you going to play in it with him unless he invites you and, and vice versa with the woman gotten all the money. You know, you got to come with something that she likes that she's going to let you share into her financial world. All right. But anyway, it was just a hot mess, and uh, Claude was just like fed up with this one guy. She said, hey, "Excuse herself." Um, now I'm going talking really about Claude and Doctor Heaven because they both really intertwined, so they're really not separate. It's not like they're having two different things going on. They're both together in this scene, so we're just gonna go back and forth with Heavenly, Heavenly and Claude. So Claude gets so upset with this man talking all this gibberish, and she just really want to go get herself together because he don't embarrass herself. She, uh, she's not letting him try to ever embarrass her, but she just needed a time to go and get a good laugh so she don't have to embarrass him. So she goes to the restroom, and um, you know, Claude's in there with the filming guy and stuff. So I don't know if it was a real like scripted scene or not, but you know, uh, her. And some guests that were in the uh, sitting area of the restaurant where they were having all this going on, the young lady was in now, and they were kicking up. Like, what kind of, what are you on, a blind date or this, that, and third? Or what is going on with that man? He quite, you know, they were just kicking kick it up. And so he got up from the table because Dr. Hevelin had saw another man come in, which uh, she had brought him into the mix as well. So Paul had two. Uh, dates going on at one time, and that was another reason why Claude got up because she couldn't believe that Dr. Heavenly had this little 
uh, trifling a man coming from a person, then she going to bring in the overweight lover. You know, his man was very huge, and I felt he was trying to compensate from a, for uh, him being so big, and maybe he had, had a tiny penis as well, and, you know, he was just confident in other areas, so you wouldn't look at him for face value, how he looks on the outside. I'm like, man, you got to be comfortable in yourself for big women, big men and women, poor men and women, okay? It's just how you got your swag going and you nice and they can sense it. And your aura is just real inviting, you know, because it doesn't really make a difference on what you look like. If that person digs you, they dig you. But it just seemed like the overweight lover, he was just full of himself and, you know, trying to throw salt on his previous wife saying she didn't want nothing, she didn't do not trying to, you know, make her do something, but she just wants to sit at home. I said, hey, if you making all that kind of money, and if she was there with the kids, she is, she does have a job. She's raising you all's children. I'm sure y'all had a conversation about it prior before you getting married. I hope you did to say who's going to be doing what, when, and where, and who's going to be out there making the money, okay? So, um, you know, he's just trying. Because I always feel this is two sides to a story. And then you have a truth in the middle somewhere. But you got to suffer through all of the, you know, bullshit to get to where what really sounds plausible. So, you know, Carl be like, uh-uh, I ain't going to be bothered with neither one of these men. But they might got money, but they ain't going to have me. And they ain't getting my honey because I ain't got nothing to do for them. They are not on my radar. They're not up to par what I want to see me with this second go round. And I ain't still with Dr. Heavenly. So, this is the nut, the first one that looked like a pimp slash play up slash I don't know, a, a real complete loser only because of how his demeanor was just too pushy, too forward, and he just thought he was the shit, okay? He gonna come in the latest bathroom, and that's when I would call security. Even though I had backup with the cameraman being in there with me, probably was a woman, camera, camera woman, um, but I would like, call security, call the manager, this man don't really act, you know, he's acting crazy. He's showing me this uh, lamb and lion right now. He's looking like a a half crazed lion and trying to make exceptions that he needs to talk to me. And then he's gonna call himself excusing the women or the woman I was in there talking with, you know, telling her to get out the bathroom. I'm like, no, you get out the bathroom for one. It's a female bathroom. You have no right or uh, no shape, form, or fashion to be in here, not even saying you want to have a conversation. You know, you're a stalker. You you just too much. You you just out of order, period. So I was like, I was, I had been through with him, but he was been too through, and I would have been calling the manager, security, the cops, the Lord. You know, Lord would probably be first, but I was like, Lord, if I had to kick this man's ass, please give me the strength to do so, because he going down. He done violated me, uh, and he done violated my personal space, okay? He done mess with my mentality. I'm thinking, you know, like, ooh, I'm feeling flight or fight. You know, I mean, fight or flight. You know, he's putting me up in this corner and I ain't liking what he's saying, even though he said he just wanted to give me a hug, just that and third. But then Heavenly came to the rescue. She came in like, what are you doing in this bathroom? I don't care what you're saying. This is, this is not acceptable. So, you know, he, you know, really got called out. He, he saw he got his little... 10 seconds of fame, or of, 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 um, a minute worth of fame, being exposed on TV, but it wasn't in a good light. It just showed him being very thirsty, very much so wanting the camera time, thinking he was looking good and all that, and they're going to show him in a positive light. No, brother, you shouldn't even came on the show, okay? Because you looking real stupid. And now the people that really cared to figure out your whole name when it flashed up on that screen who you were, they're not only not going to come to you for dental services, but they might be putting you up for a stalker charge. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like anonymous, this man is crazy because this is what he did at this restaurant at this time of the day. And, you know, this is who he was messing with. And it was an unwanted uh, advance and this, that, man, please. Okay. But um, Dr. Heavenly came, got, they both went back out. They talked with the overweight love i forget what his name was like i said he was overdoing it he was trying too hard and then he was putting down his so-called ex-wife and whatnot so i was through with him then but dr heavenly she got she got some boldness to her this man went him but probably maybe say 10 or 20 minutes um didn't have any food from what i saw neither one of them did really 
but uh, maybe they had a drink or two. But Dr. Heaven said, you finna pay for this drink. You're going to be the gentleman and you're going to see us out. The, the waitress or the waiter is up there or the man to pay the bill. He's up front. Go see him and pay our tab because we finna bounce. OK, we don't need your services no more. I'm like, Damn, heaven, that's kind of cold. Anything you should pay for whatever y'all spent there. Uh, was it drinks? Was it some uh, like cocktails y'all were having? Did y'all have an appetizer or whatever? No, Heavenly, you going to pay for it because that's a hot mess unless you just tell them giving them free publicity to come to your, their uh, their dental office and get services or something to that effect. You giving them free publicity. Other than that, you pretty much made a fool out of those guys. But anyway, um, they go on and kiki it up and she would tell me, Heavenly, just stay out of her business. She don't want no more setups for her. But, you know, Dr. Heavenly ain't listening. She's going to come again with something else. She's like, okay, these two didn't work. I I'm going back to the drawing board. And I'm like, uh-uh, don't go to the drawing board. Go home to your husband, your children, and you keep them straight. But th that's okay. I hired a professional or I meet them the old-fashioned way out in the street. <laughs> but that it was hot mess. That was, and that was really the gist of the whole scene with both of them. So we're going to move on from there. That was just a whole disaster disaster that was waiting to happen. But Claude needed her family time. She needed to make her dollar on this show for that episode or dollars, however you want to put it. And we're going to move on to Buffy. Buffy, Buffy, Buffy. I tell you, you just can't, I don't know where these people come from. This woman said that uh, when she start crying, she feels it's foreign. <laughs> Like, you ain't never cried before. But she done broke out tears and everything by going over to see Dr. Simone because she found some lumps under her breast. But Dr. Simone, after doing a thorough investigation, it was like extra mass tissue she felt. But she went on and, and um called herself um um referring her out to a specialist that she knew and felt uh real comfortable about referring patients to her, especially her patients, for an additional assessment of you know what was going on with Buffy and Buffy I'm like how stupid can you be I mean breast cancer is a really bad uh way of dying uh when you just don't do it because you don't feel like doing it or you just scared to go to the doctor or whatnot well if you have that type of fear talk to somebody about it have them go with you and be your support but you trying to tell me Buffy you ain't had nobody in your family you had to go and let Dr. Simone accompany you to this specialist to see uh, a second opinion of what's going on with your breasts or whatnot. And, you know, the visit was basically simple. She went in, uh, she told uh, Buffy she'll go with her and whatnot, but she chastised her about waiting because uh, the lumps had been with Buffy for six months. And I, I couldn't get over Buffy rolling a work satchel up there on wheels. Like, are you doing uh, Dr. Simone's taxes, her office taxes, as you go in for your appointment, honey? I mean, what's going on with that satchel? I can see if you're having a purse or whatnot. But where you coming with that work bag, girl? Where you coming with that work bag? You're an accountant, okay? What's going on? You trying to do her taxes instead of worry about your health? That you don't let been neglecting for six months? I mean, people can be dead in six months, Buffy. But you want to bring life into this world uh, with trying to have a biological child, but yet you ain't even looking out for your own well-being? Like, uh-uh. I mean, we all get scared or whatnot, but we ain't going to come. Because I know I have, uh, what do you call it, like swollen nodules sometimes. And it'd be the deodorant that I'd be using uh, under my uh, arms that sometimes may give me these uh, enlarged lymph nodes. But, you know, once... Uh, or it can be like stress or whatever. I can develop them, but I know what they are. And I definitely tell my doctors about them. And we check those things out. But you don't go six months, you know, just all willy-nilly because you're scared. Shit, you can be six feet under and never thought about again, okay? Doing that kind of mess. So I kind of, kind of, ooh, got upset with uh, Buffy, uh, you know, with that, saying she knew about these lungs, so she didn't do anything uh, to him because she's scared to go to doctors because only doctors tell her bad stuff. Now, you sound like a man. A man don't want to go to the doctor for neck because he feel like he's going to get bad things told to him and they don't know how to cope. But women, you know, we're supposed to be outright and, and educating ourselves and, and at the forefront of definitely going and having a consultation with our physician when things are going wrong or we feel they're going wrong. We're just up on it. So I'm very surprised at Miss Buffy. But anyway, I think it's some psychological problems she needs to be dealing with that happened in childhood that she needs to definitely uh, talk with someone about. I mean, we all have had some shocking things that happened to us and we just cover them up and think that they're not going to affect us. 
you know, early on. It could be very uh, large. It could be very minute. But, you know, you have to talk about things in order to have internal peace. Now, that was my golden nugget for you all. Take it for what it is. It just is what it is, okay? Uh, but, uh, yeah, and I was like, do Buffy drive, honey? Because she was being chauffeured around and her and Simone when they were going to uh, Buffy's specialist appointment. Buffy was uh, being chauffeured in a town car, y'all. <laughs> I'm like, Buffy, couldn't you have been handling and wheeling and dealing and driving that town car yourself, girl? I like girl, Buffy, Buffy, but maybe she can't drive. I'm going to give her that. Or maybe she don't want to drive. Atlanta traffic is horrible. But either way, you know, it just is what it is. I thought it was just, you know, very cute because I've never seen this happen on Married to Medicine before. <laughs> Unless the women were going somewhere and it was a group of them and they didn't want to drive or they were going to some social highlight affair and they didn't want to drive so they got a chauffeur. I'm like, Buffy, Buffy, you rolling like that, girl. Every time you step out, the driver is there. I'm like, are you a politician, girl? Do uh, you have that type of security clearance where you don't have to drive? You working for the state, honey, the federal what? But anyway, that's my hang up. <laughs> I was just, I was just, you know, blown away when I saw that because it's, uh, it's unfamiliar to me because I, you know. Most women, they like to drive. They like to get in, get out. They don't want to wait on nobody to uh, be sitting there or calling them to come on. Uh, when I finish whatever I got to do, I'm jumping in my car and I'm bouncing. You know, the only thing that's really stopping me is that doggone traffic out there. But it just is what it is. That's how she gets down in her livelihood, okay? But um, let me see. That was pretty much it of Buffy. Uh, glad to see her because usually they don't have nothing to do with her. They just be taking little shots here and there. So we were glad to have something to report on Buffy for a change. Uh, when it comes to Dr. Jackie, Dr. Jack and her husband, they're going over to see this new building. They're uh, reconstructing for Jack Jackie's practice because the current one she's at, she's really outgrown it. So she's needing new space, new parking space for the um staff as well as the clients that she has coming in she just really outgrew the old place so they're working in a transition where they're getting this new one ready and she'll have all the amenities that she's not being have uh having at the old facility so that's a good thing for her uh then she got the other project where she's gutting out her house a brand new house that she just bought purchased or whatnot i'm sure it was some a house that was lived in before or whatnot for maybe a couple of years or whatnot and she's revamping it. She likes the structure of the house, but she wants to, you know, make some things go bigger and wider than what they were originally, uh, what she originally moved in and purchased. So, yeah, she's pretty much gutting that place and making it her own. Um, that was the second project. The third project, she's still trying to write her book. OK, so she's definitely have overwhelmed herself by being a practicing physician full time doing a book or uh, publishing you know another book then trying to renovate a house she just purchased oh the money that's going out but i'm sure she got a truckloads coming in to replace all that but to me it's just like she's still getting all these materialistic things and, and accomplishing all these feats but she's not going to get what she wants because curtis is not a willing participant because she can definitely have kids you can adopt you can have somebody be a surrogate for you this that and the third but uh, Curtis is like damn no okay so I don't know how she, she can keep continue getting new projects to work on but they're never going to fill that void that hole that she's gonna have while still messing with this man okay he happens to be her project manager that she also hired now go figure why are you employing him he still should be out there working okay but he don't retire from the uh college he was coaching at or whatnot or maybe it was a high school. Who knows? Who cares? You know what I'm saying? But the point is, um, it seems like these successful women are just taking care of their men. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, shouldn't it be the other way around? Or what's going on? Candy doing the same thing to Todd? And uh, I can go on and on and on, but we ain't going to go there. Um, but yeah, he's retired from his coaching job. He's her new project manager. He's still asking for Jackie to find more time with him. But with him being her project manager, he could be all day, every day, seeing what she's doing at work, meaning she's working. She's not fooling around. She's not having an affairs. She's not going meeting me clandestinely. You know, she's doing what she's supposed to be doing. So you come up there and see her, bring her lunch, 
bring her dinner, and y'all can have talks, okay? You'll see where your wife is. Because most of the time when you're trying to be too much with her, you don't did something out there. You just feel guilty. But that's just how I feel about that situation. Moving on. Toya and Mariah, they really had nothing to bring uh, as far as any entertainment. Uh, they both came to Dr. Contessa's um, birthday party she had from her kids. So we just going to move off of them. And we're going to get to Contessa. Yes, Contessa threw this big old lavish birthday party that cost between $10,000 to $15,000. Woo, I tell you, when you got a flaw like that, I guess you can be frivolous and waste it on stupid ass stuff. But those are her kids. She missed all three of their birthdays. I don't see how that's possible, you know, but she missed them due to her going to school uh, and focusing solely on that. And she still didn't get to attain that thief because her husband, she's still making, you know, pay mentally uh, for her having to have to come home, get the house back in order while he still continues to live his life, do his things that he wants to do and build his practice, okay? But she still had been very salty about that, being very resentful, but she's trying to make it up to the kids by giving them this outlandish type of birthday party. And she had a hundred folks to um, RSVP that they were coming. Because, hell, I thought they were neighborhood kids just coming out the woodworks, you know, coming out the the jungles, the the forest, and, and the streets and everywhere, you know what I'm saying? It was just a, a bar gate of kids. And I was like, whoo, child, you had to use that as a birth control. For me, I, I wouldn't have had no children up to this point because that's just been traumatizing. It's just kids, 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 kids screaming it's everywhere. It's like, oh, it's horrible. But anyway, um, the um, uh, her friends showed up. Um, let me see. Mariah showed up with her kids, or so I guess she had her kids there. But they, you know, they were fairly big kids, so they could go and come however they please. But she was walking around trying to say hello to everybody and just that and third. She ran into Toya's son, and he was like, she asked him why he ain't in the pool, why he ain't splashing, why he ain't doing what he got to do. He said that pool is dirty. <laughs> She said, well, honey, if the boy said it's a pissy pool, then it's a pissy pool. But then he was going to change his mind and go get in the pool. But Tori said, uh-uh, don't go get in that pool. You were right. It's probably nasty. And plus, it's too many people. They don't been in there a, a long time. We just got here. And since you catching all them germs, just that third. Tori just being too much. Okay. But anyway, she ain't let her child get in that pool either. So uh, Jack and her husband finally came. Uh, to the uh, party, and of course, you know, they ain't got no kids, but she looking, and she having, like, an anxiety attack, because she's like, yeah, hell, there ain't too many kids for me, I just ain't even want one or two, but good lord, you know, so she kind of got overwhelmed, and looked through the uh, organized chaos that was going on at uh, the McCall uh, household, uh, and their little function they're having for their three kids, and who is this hot mess, who, I, I, who gives me bad things, dreams, even think about having no many kids, Ooh. But anyway, um, and let me see what happened. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Dr. Hamlin had brought her son. And I don't know what happened. She got a wet spank, uh, stain on her butt from, I guess, her son moving. And she wasted her coffee or whatever drink she had. So she was fussing about that. Um, Patessa was fussing at her husband about not pitching in and helping her get the stuff started prior to the guest showing, and he was looking at her like she was crazy, and he's like, I don't work for you, I don't work for them, tell them folks out there that's uh, supposed to be doing it. he went in the house, child. he's like, he's too fit to be tired at all, and she started fussing at the uh, people, I'm like, I have not hired somebody to come and set up the majority of this stuff the night before, because I'm sure the kids knew they were getting a party, and they would have still been overwhelmed when it came to party day, you know what I'm saying, just everything had to be set up, that was big and bulky and all that stuff the night before, okay? But um, I don't know how it was uh going down, but it all came together. And But it just shows that Contessa was just getting too stressed out, trying to make up for something that was in the past. You know what I'm saying? Hey, she could have said, okay, when I come home, I'm taking y'all, you know, out to eat or, you know, just handle each birthday and when they were born, you know what I'm saying? One was born in June, handle it in June, okay? One was born in July, do the same thing. Don't let them, uh, you know, uh, bombard you and make you feel overwhelming guilt that you got to make up in such an elaborate way, a $10,000, $15,000 elaborate way. Girl, you crazy. But anyway, that's basically how that went down. And that's all I pretty much had for this video, y'all. It was kind of cute, kind of cute. Uh, but uh, definitely... 
Scott was talking to Cecil about, you know, Contessa wanting him to go to counseling. He thought it was a fairly good idea. Contessa was talking to Dr. Heavenly. She thought it was a fairly good idea. But she told her, don't be having no more parties like this because th this is stressing you out right here because, hell, it's stressing me out. All right. So I was like, okay, good, Dr. Heavenly. You did that one real good because that quad situation and trying to set her up on a date was a hot mess. Y'all get out in them comments. Y'all tell me what y'all thought about it. If y'all saw the episode, did you see it from my perspective? Or, you know, was it quite different? I would love to know. Get in them comments and tell me about them. Don't forget to take my polls. That's at my com community section on my Instagram. Excuse me, down my YouTube channel. And um, get your uh, talk on, interact there as well. But I will see you all next video. But don't forget to subscribe, like, and share my videos, okay? And we'll keep growing together. All right. Good night, guys. Bye-bye. I know I ain't perfect, but I'm just telling how it be. Dang.